and ensure that no pests are brought in on transplants, people, or equipment. The double door system is a good way of keeping things out, but only if used properly. Both doors should never be open at the same time. Placing a foot bath at the entrance, between the two doors, is another good practice for disease control. By providing equipment that is only used in the greenhouse, and by wearing overalls or coveralls, the farmer's ability to keep pests and disease out is greatly enhanced. Sanitation is another essential strategy in an IPM program. This means keeping the greenhouse and its surroundings free of weeds, which may harbor pests and disease. Weeds represent one of the main sources of pests, and they are often not targeted in pest control activities. In particular, broadleaf weeds should be kept from the vicinity of the greenhouse. Weeds also compete for nutrients in the greenhouse. Using plastic mulch over the beds can drastically reduce the amount of time spent weeding. When weeding, pruning, or pulling diseased plants, all plant scraps should be removed from the greenhouse the same day and be either buried or burnt. Scouting for pests and diseases should take place regularly. This allows the farmer to notice early signs of infestation and catch the problem while it is still controllable. Plant inspection should take place as often as possible, and not less than once a week. Scouting is particularly important when the plants are still young. Data from scouting activities should be recorded and used in a monitoring program that follows pest population developments and the impact of control activities. Sticky traps should be installed both inside and outside the greenhouse to monitor flying insects, including aphids, white flies, and thrips. Visual inspections are also very important, especially with transplants entering the greenhouse. Indicator plants are chosen once a pest or disease has become established. They are used to make a close, ongoing examination of the problem in the face of control activities. Biological control involves beneficial organisms that are used to manage or eradicate populations of pests. In greenhouses, small wasps, lady beetles, or predatory mites are used to control pests. Success of the program depends on understanding the pest's biology and acquiring the biological control agent that will function well in that particular greenhouse environment. The key factor here is what pesticides are used. The unhappy truth is that most pesticides are toxic to biological control agents. When pesticides are used inside a greenhouse, great care is needed to choose ones that are effective, but harmless to the workers, biological controls, or any other beneficial living organisms. Care should also be taken when preparing pesticides since only small amounts of pesticides are normally used in greenhouses and measurements have to be accurate. Because greenhouse production is valued highly by the consumer, it is common for production managers to be risk-averse and to resort quickly to pesticides to resolve problems. However, IPM programs, especially those based on biological control, have proved very successful in greenhouse settings. Harvesting and post-harvest handling is important in maintaining the quality of the crop. While it does not improve the quality of the crop, poor harvesting and post-harvest handling can most certainly damage the crop and decrease profits. When harvesting and transporting